Why, hello everybody, it is Robbie from Southern California, and this is the mid garden tour of what month are we in? April! So, this is when I walk through and show you what's you know going on in the past couple weeks, but I'm gonna try to do this a little differently and literally just walk through and not get into every specific plant because I have so many other things and videos I wanna put up because my goal and Gary's goal is to get people to garden. I want people to garden whether they have a big yard or a small small yard. It doesn't matter. You can garden in containers, you can garden in the ground, you can garden in flower pots, anything to grow food. And I think once you start growing some food, it really becomes important and fun. In the front yard, as you can see, it's kind of the same, but it's cleaned up. And I know that over a month ago, two months ago, I said a lot of this was going to be torn out and I was going to plant new. Well, as you all know, things have changed in our lives. And so I am not going to pull out anything that is producing and going good. Because if it's going good now, it's going to do better as time goes on. So what I'm doing here is this is dinosaur kale that's going to flower and there's a goldfinch sitting in the tree waiting for me to move so he can come and pick on some of the flowers and see if there's any insects. I'm going to leave that and I'm going to be feeding my own food to it. And what I do is I rot leaves in a bucket and then I just pour it on there after about two, three days and the plants just burst into life and they get so much greenery to them and they just take off. My broccoli, this is a broccoli, was doing really well. Oh, there's more now. We just keep picking it and eating it and giving it to Kitty, our Yorkie. She loves her broccoli. What's growing in here, all these hundreds and thousands of plants, is celery. And you know, celery is so good for you, especially the leaves. Most people eat the stalks when they buy it from the store. They throw the leaves out and the leaves have more nutrition in it than the stalks. So I'm gonna be transplanting a lot of that. There's a big celery plant. And you've seen how I've done this. And yes, there's a cutting from a tree collar. Let me show you. This is where I compost. So I have two buckets. This bucket I'm holding has holes on the bottom. It goes inside the other bucket and I water that bucket, which naturally is feeding everything else. And I've been so busy, I haven't put anything in it and I put some stuff in it this morning. But that's another way that you can feed your plants. Haven't put anything in here and this is where I grew those torpedo sized zucchinis in both of these tubs. So I'm gonna get that together very soon. But this is the front yard. I mean, if people tell you you can't grow in containers, these totes, are the perfect raised bed. You have so much control over it. I have so much control over it. I love it. Look at the leaves on this. They are like elephant ears. Now, the more plants you put in there, the smaller your plants could be. Notice I say could, because it will depend on the plant. It will depend if you're buying plant food to feed it or making your own and keeping up with it. You're gonna rot some leaves and put it in there once a week, your plants will get giant. Sometimes I forget and I never go back, but I still get beautiful plants all year. So that is one Swiss chard growing in there and I think I've got a little seedling of a broccoli coming up in the pot that's in there because I layer. But you can grow all kinds of things in these totes. These totes to me are the best raised beds that you could possibly get because you can control them, you can move them, you could do what you want with them. So as you can see, we're just starting. I've got some squash coming up. This is uh, green sorrel, but I don't want to go over every plant. Here around this stump, I put all my baby walking onions. So you could see they're just starting to come up. I went around the yard this year, thank goodness, and I collected every one I could find, and I just pushed them in a pot. They were overcrowded, so they didn't grow, but they stayed alive, because if I didn't collect them, they would have died. This is walking onions. And you use the whole plant. You can use the bottom, the greens, and even the babies. And these are the babies. And what it does is it grows up. It will burst open and you'll have a new plant on top. In nature, it would fall over, you know, it'd be in the ground. It would fall over and then it would grow a whole new plant. But you know, in your gardens, they fall over, they fall on another plant, and then it doesn't work and they dry out and they die and they will die. Oh, this was an experiment. 
let me tell you for a raised bed a cardboard box doesn't work it's been there five days it's almost completely gone so you really need to get totes and I bet you if you look around your house a lot of you probably even have totes because people use them for storage but all in all I've got all different size totes I've got them from 18 gallons on up this of course is a big one that one's is not, not a quite as big but it's you know it's a good size and size does not matter that's one thing it doesn't matter on the totes because if you have a smaller totes you put one or two tomato plants in it or one zucchini in it with other things that don't have a big root system like well you know what that's another video let's get into that another time but if you were going to put other plants in there you could put parsley and different herbs no mint because mint has a massive root system and so you could grow squash in there with parsley and walking onions and different things like that so I love my totes again raised beds let's walk down here for a minute this is going to be the new garden and yes I am buying totes I have not left the house now in like three and a half weeks I have been buying everything online including the potting soil a lot of people don't like miracle Grow, but you know what it's on sale it's cheap and it doesn't matter because that is my base once I plant once I get my containers going I don't need any more soil ever you could if you want to buy but I don't need any more because I build my own soil and when I say you know I build my own soil the leaves from the plants that are growing that are brown are going to go back into my containers and so you build your own soil and that's the best soil it's even going to be better than what you buy so I'm very very excited about that this is going to be great it's going to go all the way down the wall and we'll walk down there in a minute oh this is water Gary's got these tanks he's been they're all full and he's got a few more he's got another one down there and this is water that we've been collecting off the roof because all it does is rain it's a beautiful day today the sky is so incredibly blue it's gonna rain tomorrow they say it's gonna rain all weekend so we'll see but we've been collecting water because I just you know what else am I gonna do I'll collect it and I've been watering the new plants that I'm setting up and we'll see how it goes I think this is gonna be really good now it may be too warm for summer because that wall stays really warm but hey you know we'll see how it goes and if not I will have a wonderful winter garden on this wall either way we'll see chairs my favorite oh look over here look how good a chair is again it's a raised bed junky chair you know basically found in the trash you put a container on top you don't have to bend and you can direct the water by making the holes where you want and that's collected in a bucket and then I can water the other plants yes I was going to pull the midnight snack out I said on one of my videos my past ones on the garden tour I was going to yank it out and start fresh well food is very important to us right now and being that it's growing it's making a good comeback I'm not so there has been a lot of changes the um, green Swiss chard is doing really good it's trying to go to seed and I've been trying to pick the heads so they won't go to seed I really don't want it to go to seed I want to get bigger leaves out of it but we'll see I've got some walking onions in the stevia on its own is coming back so I think I'm gonna leave it right now because I do use those green leaves toss them into eggs and stir-fry and tacos and different things so right now I'm going to leave it I am NOT going to tear apart this chair and see that's what I was saying once you put potting soil or anything you put in there you're gonna make a hole and put your leaves back and you're gonna build your own soil it's gonna be so much better than when you bought it and you you'll see the plants are just going to take off this is the tool gosh is it two years old this tool is so old I can't believe it and the same thing there I'm not taking any of that tool down the tool has actually deterred the deer the deer do roam through here once in a while and they take tops off they took a top off of my purple tree colored but you know what all in all it worked out okay it grew back and instead of having one it chomped it in half I stuck it in the pot and I now have two purple tree collards growing so all in all it worked out okay but as far as the tool 
I have noticed that even with the deer, I know the rodents don't like the tool, but even with the deer, they, they must not know what it is, and if they can't move it, like here they actually lifted it off, but if they can't move it, they really don't want to touch it either. So it's kind of deterred the deer a little bit. Oh, here, I haven't done anything yet. More containers, kind of awkward the way it's set up. But I am going to freshen those up and get things going. And that's my peppermint in there. The table here is doing fantastic. This is my ginger and turmeric and stevia table. And if the weather stays warm, they'll take off. I have a ginger back there that is coming up. Let me move the basket. I don't really need the basket on it. And so I've got a ginger starting. And this is a purple tree colored. I bought online and I have to get that in the ground. And these are lemon verbena cuttings I did. Isn't that cool? Not that I need any more, but isn't that cool? And this is a squash I was going to make a video on and how to make a bird bath out of that. Oh, we'll see if I get to it. Okay, now we're gonna go into the main yard. Oh, that crazy toey down there. This is my main garden. I, like I said, I want to walk through today and not go over every plant. I don't want to keep this, you know, I want to keep it down under an hour. I really want to keep it short. This garden, when I started it, I brought in bags of potting soil. I bought what was on sale and I set up containers. I did set up things in the ground. I mean, here's a dinosaur kale that is now, what, five years old in the ground. Look at the trunk my last big five-year-old dinosaur kale and it is you know it has gone to seed and has been going to seed that's why the leaves are so small and yes that is a male goldfinch sitting right in front of us he just took off literally three feet I could have reached out almost and touched him they know me so I, I think that's really fantastic but you know I have planted in the ground but I'm going to tell you for me I absolutely like pots I feel with containers and pots, you retain more water and we're in an area that, you know, once it stops raining, we're fairly dry and containers just seem to grow better for me. And this is what's interesting. If you are new to us, you're going to see that Gary and I set up our gardens very, very different. Gary does everything in wood chips. And yes, he returns everything back to the soil. When the leaves die, everything goes back. It rejuvenates your soil, your land, and the plants just take off. Now, me, I do the same thing, but I use a lot of containers. There's some stuff in the ground, some stuff I planted, and some plants have just reseeded and came back on their own. They're all different. Now, some of you might say, well, gee, you know, I grow dinosaur kale and the leaves are so much bigger and they look nicer. And that is true, you know, for some people it can, but that's also new plants. A lot of my plants are three and four years old. That's why they're so big and they grow like trees. It's whatever way you want to do it. This is almost like a food forest. I really have done very little of adding plants in because everything comes back after winter and starts to grow. My walking onions, my mint comes back. The dinosaur kale, the lemon verbena is now getting full of beautiful leaves. They're small, but it's coming back. Here's another one that needs some trimming. That's in a pot as well. This monster that's winding around, don't know if you can see it really well, that is purple sprouting broccoli. That thing's only about a year old. And it is so big, and that was my mistake. See, it's pushing over the container. This container, by the way, is about five years old now, I believe. No cracks. It is bent. It's bent because of the purple sprouting broccoli, but no cracks. When you have soil in these totes, soil will keep the plastic flexible so they will not crack. You should have a container, a tote, last you for many, many years. A cardboard box, keep in mind, some people are trying that. You're really going to waste your time and your money, and you're going to get discouraged when it falls apart after a couple weeks. If you've got, you know, wood and you want to build a raised bed, that is perfect too. That will last you for many years, probably just as long as the totes. The plastic containers last for a long time. You could probably go back and find my old videos on this. I think I put that together over three years ago, and look how beautiful these totes are. 
and I just like the idea that we just moved these. We had them here up against the glass door, and I looked at it one day and thought, gee, I think I'd like them over there, and they're easy to move. You can move them. And then once you set them up, you don't have to do anything. You, all you have to do is make holes in them, you know, in the soil, not the tote, push in all the scraps that you've got left in your garden, the leaves that are going bad, anything turning yellow, and you are building your soil like Mother Nature. You could drop it on the top as well, on the top of the soil, and then cover some soil on top. There's multiple ways of doing it. All over here, growing on the ground, is spearmint. These big leaves, look at this. Look at the size of the spearmint. It's massive. Those are even double the size. They're so big, they're getting a lot of water and a lot of nutrients out of the wood chips. They are growing in the soil. And there is pepino. They're growing, and I'm going to do some cuttings off of it. And you can use pepinos in stir fry and different things, be it before it's ripe, or you can wait till pepino ripens and then it's sweet like a melon. That is going. Another thing that is going on in the garden, that is a curry plant, and I have never cooked with it, so Gary and I discussed it this morning. He said it deters deer. I said, then find a place for it, put it in with your apple trees, get it out, because that is valuable real estate to me, because that container that it's growing in, I can put tomatoes or something else in there, or peppers. That is going. I've been cleaning this one out, and this is gonna be, you know, I'm getting rid of all the old plants in here that are just too small. And I'm going to plant something really nice in here. And I'm going to decide this is sprouting broccoli if I want to take this old plant out or leave it. Walking onions are all over. You can see them. And the birds are all trying to come in because I have water fountains everywhere. Look at all the beautiful solar fountains. Remember, when you bring in birds into your garden, the birds are the ones that are going to come in. And yeah, they may take a nibble out of your plants here and there. But what they're doing is they're also eating all the insects. We do not use any type of spray, powder, nothing. We don't need it. The birds come in and they do this all for me. They do it for Gary too. Yeah, you'll get some insects on something and you may have to trim it off or wash it off with a hose, you know, some water. But all in all, I don't really have to do anything. I mean, look how beautiful this all is. It's going to seed right now. It's all beautiful. The birds come in here and they pick off the tiny insects. It's their food. And right now they're having babies all over, so they need a lot of food. So I try to keep them happy by having bird baths all over. They come in, they take a bath, and then they hang around and they eat in the garden with me sitting here. Another container. Now, if you see any cracked ones, a lot of them I have picked up in the trash. So they might have had a crack when I got them. But you know what? For free, as long as they last, I'll continue to use them. It doesn't matter to me. Look at this. Now this will have to be trimmed out. This is my spearmint. And it's too much. So I'm going to put stepping stones in here. I want to be able to get to all my plants. Because this year, it is very important for me to make sure that I can get to everything and not have that much waste. I know that sometimes I think, ah, oh, I can't get back there, and there's cucumbers growing back there, or squash, or different things. No, not this year. This year, if I can't use it, somebody else can use it, so I'm going to make sure I get to it. And I want this all cleared, so I'm going to be making, you know, stepping stones through here and a path, so I can get to the back as well as grow more food. And that is very important to me. And that's important to me to get you guys to grow food. Even if you don't have much space, you got a balcony, you can grow a lot of food in one little 18 gallon container or even a flower pot. It doesn't matter, but you can grow a lot of food. And I'm gonna say that good food grown fresh by you, look how beautiful the sky is, by you gives you nutrients that you're not gonna get out of a lot of stuff you buy. And that's, you know, that's very important. I want to impress that to everybody. You want to keep your immune system up. You want to keep your energy up. Let me tell you, when I go collect some greens in my garden and I whip it up in the blender, and that's all I use is a blender, and I make myself a green drink, let's say I forgot for a few days, I feel a hundred times better. I feel good. It just it gives me a lot more energy. My thoughts are clearer. 
And that's what's so important is to get some real live food, not food that came out of a can. I'm not saying not to buy it. You have to buy canned food right now. And there may be a slight shortage this year too. But you can add to your canned food. You can add to your frozen food. You can add to your pre-made food, your, whatever you're buying. You add something, one leaf. One beautiful leaf can give you so many nutrients that it can make a difference in what you ate by just adding and chopping it up or adding it to a sandwich you made. That's what's so important to me. Here is my tree colored. I show that every time I do a garden tour. That thing is, I don't know, 15, 20 feet tall. And I have been using that for all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna actually dry that, and make some powder out, out of it. But I use it in the green drinks. I've made chips out of it. I've even made coleslaw out of it, as well as sauerkraut out of it now. I've got a technique of the way I do it, because for me, it was a little strong to make like a sauerkraut. So I soaked it in warm water. I cut it up, soaked it in warm water, drained it, and then made sauerkraut like you do with cabbage. Works perfect, Gary loves it. Let's keep walking through here. So I've got a lot of things I'm still working on. I've been devoting a lot of my time right now into working on the new front yard. Well, it's against the wall, the wall garden, because I want to get that set up and then I can come back here and work. Okay, these strawberry papayas didn't do well with the cold, but I also think that those ravens up there have been stealing some of the papayas. I have found them on the ground and I have seen a raven with a papaya in its mouth. So they found the small papayas. They haven't touched the big ones, I don't think. And then back here, let's walk back here for a minute. I wanna take the strawberry tower apart too, because I'm not going to the nursery to buy strawberries. Yes, I can buy strawberry plants online, but I think I can work with what I've got because there's so many in here that I've got multiple plants. But back here, again, baby walking onions. I've got to get them out of here. More there. And then I want to get some more moringa, which is fabulous. I want to get more moringa planted around the yard too. You can even use that as an annual. So we'll see how that goes. But all in all, the tomatoes are coming back, so I'm cleaning them up. And then I've got some more tomatoes here that are starting to come back. If they don't come back, I will plant new plants. That is not a problem. But I do want to clean this up and see what's going to come back and what's not. I was going to be harsh in the beginning of the year. I had told you I was going to just start chopping things out and putting in new plants. Well, if it's growing, it's not coming out. No, I'm going to work with it. And let me tell you also, this is collard. This is also probably four or five years old now. Um, you can see how it's on the ground. It winds around all over the place. That makes the best plant food. Take a few of these leaves. Take the worst leaves. Drop them in a bucket of water. Let them start to rot. And they start to smell in two or three days and you water your plants with it. That's the best plant food you can get. Now let's step in for a minute into in the room inside here that Gary set up. But I will say we're not really doing anything in here. But somebody's going to ask... Okay, so, oh, I gotta get my stevia, stevia out. This is my stevia, which is growing beautiful indoors. That's stevia as well. And then what else? I don't know what else he's got in here. Malabar spinach. This is a cutting off a tomato plant. So there's really not much going on in here. He, we are taking things out. Now see, the moringa plant did beautiful all winter in here, but it needs now to go outside. That's basically it. There's not much going on. We'll see what we're going to do in the winter. But right now, you know, we're trying to get things out. So that's this yard. And isn't that something? Yeah, I could pull everything out and start fresh, but I don't need to. We've got, all this is food. As far as your eye can see, this is all food. So that's one thing where we have no shortage of greens and we are waiting now for the squash to start to grow and the tomatoes to start turning so we can start eating those. So let's go through the gates and let's go see what's going on in the garden, the back garden. So now we're out of my gated garden and we're out here now in the very back of the property. The papaya trees, of course, are doing really, really well. Oh, there's a bee. And then there's more, look at this. This branch came up down here and look how big those papayas are on the side shoots. So isn't that really cool? So you've got them up there, just loaded up there. 
And then of course you've got them on the branches that are starting to come off on the sides. And there's more papayas there. I've got to get these containers all loaded with leaves because papayas, as I always say, are heavy feeders, which means you just got to feed them back the way nature would feed them. All the leaves would fall and rot on the ground around them and then they would just grow into beautiful papaya plants. So I've got to get a lot going there. And then of course it's double duty with these containers, these totes, because I will be growing other plants in there, in them, you know, with it. And then of course you've got my pomegranate trees that I planted from seed, more rosemary back there, another pomegranate, and that's it. Let's walk over to the wall. Haven't worked that much here, but we'll take a look and see what's going on. So this is the wall that had the bathtub that's now been moved. You've seen that in my past garden tours. Look at all the lizards on the wall. And that's where I'm going to start way down there, and I'm going to bring basically all the squash and food and peppers and tomatoes and different things, eggplant, whatever I want to grow all down here. I've left a lot of the Swiss chard that has come up. This is kind of the red and green Swiss chard. This is all celery that's coming up. These can be moved and I don't kid yourself, I am moving them. Look at this. All coming up on its own. This is gorgeous. The seeds fall, they come up, they're happy here. Anything that's happy to grow in your yard that you grew and comes up on its own, you know, volunteers, that's a good plant to keep because that means your climate, your soil, everything about it is perfect and it's happy. That's an eggplant. Oh, I see eggplant. They're inside, Let's see? So we've got eggplant. These are small ones. This one came up on its own. I don't know what kind of eggplant it is. It just showed up last year. And all this has to be pulled. This has not been done. We've been moving things around and I'm deciding on how many more totes I want to get. In fact, Gary told me, order him some totes. They're five bucks. You think about it. You buy a tote for five dollars. Let's say you want a bigger one. You spend ten. And you've got that thing for three, four, five years, if not longer. Think of all the foods you can grow in them. And then they're movable. You probably remember I had the totes going all the way in the bathtub. Well, I moved a lot of the totes right now, and they're being moved down there. So that's what I love about them. You don't like where they are? Drag them away and move them. I've got many videos on the totes. I'm making more right now because there's so many things that you go along using them, which you figure out how it would work even better. So I am big on a raised bed as a tote. I think totes make the best raised beds. Here's the bathtub. Gary set it up for the deer and we are planting it up slowly. Isn't that cute? I told you the story. My neighbor threw the bear away. She also gave me the fountain, the little boy, the little baby on the fish. And I set up this solar fountain really quick. Really quick and it's working quite well. No mosquitoes because Gary put his fish in there and they've been doing their job. Oh, you can see the fish. So they've been doing their job. So all this is working out really, really well. And whatever wants to come take a drink, can take a drink, be it birds, be it deer. I just think it's gonna be really cute once it's all set up. And you know, it's such a beautiful place to sit. I mean, you sit out here, I have never seen the sky so blue. I don't remember the sky this blue. Look at that. It's so blue, it's almost violet. And we were sitting out here this morning and just sitting and watching all the birds. It's just, the air smells good. Everything, it's so fresh. Isn't that gorgeous? You can just see planes, well, the occasional plane or the birds flying through. And the sky is gorgeous. And it's just beautiful to sit here. And that's what we've been doing. Gary's been putting, out, well, he did put the aloe vera out there. And he's been moving them as they split, you know, as they grow pups. And then the truck bed. The truck bed I've got an issue with. So I'm going to have to do things just a little differently. I am a problem solver. Wish I could solve everything, but I can't. And I've always been that way since I was a young little kid. I have a snail issue, and yeah, I can go around picking some snails out, which I have, but I know how to get rid of them. I know what I have to do to get my squash. I had some squash growing in here, and the snails got to them. The plants are probably still there, but they're not gonna grow. So I'm gonna just do something a little different. So that will get rid of my snail problem, probably. And then I had a roly-poly problem in one of those totes. 
So I'm cleaning up that problem. So I should be able to get squash coming up really soon there and then get rid of the snails there or not get rid of them. I just really have to work with them. And that's it. So this is a quick garden tour. Um, like I said, we've got a lot of new subscribers and a lot of new people that have come in and asked a lot of questions. And what my goal is and Gary's goal is, is to try to help with the ideas that we know have learned what works and help other people get set up too. Because when you first start on any project, it's, it can be really tough. But when you can get ideas from people, and you don't necessarily have to use my idea or Gary's idea, but what you'll do is you'll take that idea and make it work for you and you'll come up with your own idea. So this is what our goal is. I wanna try to get people so bad to grow something to get some good nutrients in them. Like I said, it could be a flower pot with parsley growing on your windowsill, and that makes a big difference. You want to grow microgreens? You could go to, you could call the feed store. A lot of feed stores now I heard are delivering for free. Buy yourself a 25 pound sack of red wheat, like I did. Throw that in a flower pot, and you've got microgreens. Every few days, you know, in five days, you have microgreens you could cut off and add your food. And let me tell you also, my dogs love eating the microgreens that grow from that. I bought red wheat, grows the fastest, but you could buy almost any type of seed that you can get cheap. There's a lot of different things you could do. You could also get seeds online, uh, sprouting broccoli and different things to grow from microgreens. There was a shortage, people contacted me. Where can we get seed? They couldn't find seed for microgreens. And I said, you know what? Go I'll call the feed store and get some wheat. And then you've got it made, you've got microgreens. But really, it's so easy to get some seeds like parsley, lettuce, and you can grow that on a windowsill. You could grow it, you know, a lot of different things like walking onions on a windowsill, practically like a house plant. So that's basically it. Wanted to go through because we are working, Gary and I, very, very hard on trying to get a lot of stuff going. I'm not going to take out things I thought I was going to take out because if it's growing good, like all that Swiss chard in the truck bed, I'm not going to pull it out. It doesn't matter if the leaves are as big as the one out front that looks like elephant ears or small. They taste just as good. I pick handfuls and I put them on a pan with some butter or water and steam them and eat them. They're so good. There's so many things you can do with them. So if the plants are looking pretty good, they get to stay this year. If they're not, they're turning into compost. And yes, I make my own compost. So that's it for today. Want to get a lot more stuff together so I can give other people ideas on how to set things up. And think about totes if you're not sure where you want to plant. Because there is so many things you could do with a tote and turn that into a great raised bed with multiple items growing in it. With that, have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. <laughs>